Welcome to CNC Learn and Build. I'm Randy Johnson. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to use the Shark RS1000 Pro CNC router table to cut a variety of joints using the built-in apps. The RS1000 Pro comes with over a dozen joinery apps, and you can find links to all of them in the description below this video. It's also worth pointing out that all of the apps use the same basic nine steps, and I'll cover each of them in detail. But I think you'll find once you become familiar with them that operating the RS1000 Pro is pretty straightforward. In this video, I'll show you how to set up and run the half blind dovetail app on the RS1000 Pro. For this setup, I'm using a half inch diameter, 14 degree dovetail bit, but the app also accepts dovetail bits of other diameters and angles. Start the setup by installing the bit. Use the pendant to raise the collar above the table and then change the bit in the usual way. Next, open the setup window and enter the bit diameter, which is a half inch in this case. There are a couple of places in the pendant where you can enter the bit diameter, but I prefer doing it here. Plus it's needed for the fence calibration, which is coming up shortly. With the bit diameter entered, open the apps menu and select the touch plate calibration option. I'm starting with the bit calibration first. Click through until the white control button appears. Attach the magnet to the bit or the collet, and then open the control screen. Use the down button to lower the bit below the table, and click OK. Check that the magnet has a good connection by touching the plate to the bit. If that checks out, click OK and start the bit calibration. The bit will automatically rise up, touch the bottom of the plate, and go back down below the table. Next, open the fence calibration screen. This time, use the control screen to raise the bit back up above the table and bring the fence forward. Then rotate the bit so the flutes are square to the fence. I find the touch plate works as a nice guide for this step. Then put the plate between the fence and the bit and tip the plate towards the bit to check the connection and then click OK to start the calibration. With the bit and fence calibration complete, remove the magnet and touch plate from the work area. Use the buttons on the main screen of the pendant to back off the fence and lower the bit and then replace the insert ring. If you've ever cut half blind dovetails, then you know that the setting of the bit height is crucial to getting a good fit. Fortunately, the RS1000 Pro has an app for that too. It's called the Dovetail Test Fit app. To locate it, you need to scroll down the app menu a couple of steps. You see it has a list of parameters that need to be set up, just like the other apps. Start at the bottom with the tail depth. For this project, I'm setting this to 3 8 of an inch deep. The next is the spacing. But before entering this one, you need to enter the bit angle, which is 14 degrees for the bit I'm using. With the bit angle entered, go back to the spacing setting. For this, the recommended spacing is 0.813. If that proves too tight or loose, you can fine tune it by adjusting the spacing up or down a small amount. Next, verify the bit diameter. The Dovetail Test Fit app is now set up and ready to run. However, since the boards need to be run end down and perpendicular to the fence, you need a way to hold them. I'm using the optional sliding miter fence accessory for this setup but a shop made table sled also works. 
I also added sandpaper to the fence to keep the boards from slipping around while routing, and it worked surprisingly well. With the miter fence secured, I clicked through the next couple of screens, which automatically positioned the fence and the bit for the first cut. Make this cut in both boards and then advance the fence for cut number two. Checking the fit shows that the recommended spacing works well for this setup. I mark my settings on my test board, which I'll use when setting up the actual half blind dovetail app, and as a reference the next time I use this bit for dovetails. Next, open the Apps menu and select the Half Blind Dovetail app. Opening this app reveals the same settings as the test app plus a couple more. Starting the tail depth, I enter the same 0.375 inches for the depth of the tails. Going to the spacing setting shows a recommended spacing of one inch. That's because I need to set the bit angle again. So after entering 14 degrees for my bit, I go back to the spacing and see that the recommended spacing is the same as I used for my test dovetail. And since that setting worked, I'll enter it here as well. Next on the list is the material width. The app uses the board width to center the dovetails on the material. After double checking the bit angle and diameter, I'm ready to run the tail portion of the joint. Proceed through each screen until the tails are all cut. Running the dovetail socket requires a stop block. For my setup, it worked to position the stop block so the leading edge of the bit aligned with the back edge of the material. This is the maximum amount you should use for sockets since going deeper would expose the socket inside the joint. Also, this amount may vary depending on your bit angle, tail depth setting, and material thickness. So run a few test cuts to find out which one is right for your setup. The miter fence is not needed for the socket since the board runs flat on the table. Use a push block to hold the board down and cycle through each cut until all of the sockets are cut. The fit proves a bit snug, but it goes together with a few mallet caps, so I'll accept it for this project. Next, I need to cut the back bevel of the tails so they fit flush in the sockets. The amount of the back bevel will also vary with your bit choice of material thickness, but using the pennant controls makes finding the right amount straightforward. First, click back to the main screen. Then open the setup screen and open the reference bit setting. This setting controls the fence zero location. Zeroing the fence to the center of the bit is the default reference point and works well in most situations. But for the back bevel, I like to change the zero reference to the front of the bit, which I think makes finding the amount for the back bevel easier. Then go back to the main screen and press the fence position button. This opens the fence edit window. Clicking on the move to zero button in this screen 
moves the fence flush with the front of the bit, which is the position I set as the bit's reference point. Next, I use the incremental move button to move the fence back exactly an eighth of an inch. I now run the tails across the bit to create the back bevel and test the fit. It looks like the tails still aren't deep enough, so I'll back the fence off another sixteenth of an inch. Looks like that worked. The tails now sit flush in the sockets. By the way, all of this button clicking may seem like a lot, but with it, you also get precise and easy control over the bit and the fence location. And once you become familiar with the process, you'll find it quicker and more accurate than manually bumping or nudging the fence into position. There are a couple of things to consider when cutting half line dovetails in the RS-1000 Pro, however. The most important is that you must be very consistent when feeding your stock over the bit, since the slightest amount of variation while routing will negatively affect the fit of your final joint. That's why it's important that your fence and sliding miter are set up perfectly square. Also, use the same amount of pressure with each cut and check that there are no wood chips or sawdust under your board or between it and the fence. With a bit of practice, you can make nice fitting half blind dovetails on the RS-1000 Pro. So if you only need a few drawer boxes and don't have a jig, the RS-1000 Pro is a handy way to get the job done. For links to other RS-1000 Pro joinery apps, see the description below this video.